final of Party Poker Late Night Poker Masters. I'm Victoria Corrin. At the table tonight, three brilliant amateur poker players have won through to sit down next to five of the game's most feared professionals and most colourful characters. Not just any old colour, Technicolor. I'm talking about a Swedish reality star, an Irish Olympic swimmer and poker millionaire, a flying Dutchman, and not one but both of our regular commentators, Barney Boatman and Simon Trumper. As a result of which shock twist, I'm off to join Jesse May in the commentary box. Let's take a closer look at tonight's contenders. In seat one, top cash player, fearsome tournament player, World Series bracelet winner from Dublin, Donica O'Dea. In seat two, top ten all-time European money winner at the World Series, poker legend and pop star, Marcel Lusk. In seat three, Hendon mobster, commentator, TV star and top player, it's the ever-popular Barney Boatman. In seat four, economic student and amateur qualifier from Late Night Poker Ace, he's only 18 years old, from Sweden, Simon Eerna. In seat five, he beat an incredible field of professionals to get here, 24-year-old amateur poker whiz, Jonathan Romero. In seat six, Monopoly champion, Hold'em champion, reality TV star and late night poker favorite, Ken Leonard. In seat seven, making it a hat trick of amateur qualifiers, 23-year-old musician from Nottingham, David Ty. And in seat eight, our regular commentator and former late night poker champion, looking to break records by doing it a second time, Simon Aces Trumper. Dealers are Marina and Stevie. Tournament director is Thomas Kremser of the International Poker Federation. Let's join Jesse May in the commentary box. This is it. Final table of the Party Poker, a late night poker masters. This is not where champions meet, it's where they are made. Lines are starting out here, 50 and 100. Some players beginning the game, of course, with 10,000 in chips. The Heat winners, starting with 15,000. Joined by the lovely Vicky Corin. Vicky, how big an advantage do you think it'll be for the four players who have 15,000? I actually don't think it will be a huge setback for the short stacks. Blinds only 100, 200. You know, there is a lot of play in it. And somebody like Barney Boatman, fearless early move maker. The raise has come from the silent Romero, 275 with a 69 suited. And Ken Leonard quickly called, does Ken know where he's at? Oh, Jonathan's made a very creative raise for this stage of the game. But uh, I think now Ken sees that flop. He's going nowhere. Well, it's the kind of flop you want to hit with King-10. I think you'd usually rather hit the 10 than the King, wouldn't you? That's right. I mean, to raise at this stage of the game, Jonathan really should have. And very dangerous here for Romero. He's made two pair, but Leonard's still leading with 10s up. And Ken's eyes on Romero's chips. It's come out green and ugly. 1600. Well, this is where fearlessness can actually be a disadvantage. Romero is happy to keep firing, and Ken would probably give it up if it weren't for the fact that he's got Jonathan beat. So it could be that the guts of the online amateur might cost him some money. Big decision for Ken, and he's made the right one. Here's the river. That's changed nothing. Although if Leonard wasn't scared before, he'll be scared now. Well, here it is. You see what I mean? Jonathan is not afraid to fire another bullet at the pot, but I think Ken won't be frightened to call it either. It's a big bet. And it's a really interesting bet, because Romero has a good enough hand to check. Does he think he's value betting, or does he know he's beaten bluffing? Well, we actually saw him in his heat uh, make Joe Beavers put down a pair of queens by betting strongly with jacks, and there, Jonathan admitted later, he wasn't sure if he was value betting or whether he was chasing someone out. Well, great players have to make great decisions, right? I don't know what information Leonard is going on right now, Vicky. But this is expensive. He has called. Oh. What a great call. Okay, nice. Romero will show the nines and threes. Tens up for Ken Leonard. And he has gone run away chip leader here, Vicky. Look smart, play smart. That's my motto. Usually I'm a happy puppy and 
very I like to talk and um, you know, like to laugh but today uh, I have a whole different state of mind I'm just focused and I think that's a good sign the action starts with each player receiving two cards face down from the dealer the two players to the immediate left of the dealer post two compulsory bets known as the blinds play then proceeds in a clockwise direction with each player having to make a betting decision they can call match the bet or raise put more money into the pot or they can fold throw their cards away once this round of betting is over the dealer reveals the flop three communal cards dealt in the middle of the table more betting follows then comes a fourth card known as the turn card and a fifth card the river players must make the best five card poker hand using the seven cards available once the betting is over the players reveal their cards and the best hand wins the pot <laughs> looking at those chips it's the red chips worth a hundred the greens five hundred dollar value and the purple chips that's what you want they're worth a thousand dollars each under the gun Lisk. And here comes Barney Boatman. Raised to 525. Ridiculous. Ian has called with a pair of sevens. That's a nasty hand for Barney to find behind it. But of course, Barney's the aggressor here. So assuming they both miss the flop, he can still win it. It's not a huge raise, less than three times the blind. And it will be only 325 on OD, who folds quite quickly head up for this flop here, Victoria. Of course, Simon Ian are not afraid to raise. Call. But here he's just going for the call. Bit of a non-believer. He thinks Barney doesn't have much and his sevens are good. Barney, a very puzzled look on his face when Simon Ian called those two sevens, trying to read, trying to put Simon on a hand. A thousand. Raise to 2,000. Oh, what a raise from Barney Boatman. Very classy move from Barney here. He bet the flop and got called. Now he's gone for the check raise. That's got to be scary for Simon. He can't just call. He's either going to throw the hand away or make such a big investment of his chips that if he's wrong, he'll be in trouble. I think it's a must pass. There's no way that he can think the queen helped Barney. Surely it's either a king or nothing, but anyway... Well, he Price believes it. I mean, Barney played that in such a way that if Simon was going to keep going at that pot, he'd be almost completely committing himself. I've watched all of the heats most of the way through, and uh, it's been very useful, especially with the, uh, the players, the new players that I didn't know. What we're into now is something completely different, something they may be less used to. This is a final table. All these people like Simon Trumper, Marcel Lusk, very, very experienced tournament professionals. They have played a huge number of final tables and uh, it plays out very, very differently to a sit and go. And I do think experience is going to be the difference today. One hundred and two hundred are the blinds, three hundred in the pot before the cards are dealt. He, he, Barney's got so many ticks and nervous mannerisms, Vicky, that uh, Pass. Pass. must be a very hard man to get a read on. <laughs> well, he's a hard man to get a read on anyway. His yes. heat, you know, he came out firing, playing every hand early. Now he's playing a little bit more cautious. Well, this is a huge opportunity for Simon Trumper. It's the first real big hand he's seen. The raise has come from David Tai for 600, and Trumper just calling on the button with the ace queen. Is he trying to set up a play where he can win a big pot here? Well, what Simon knows is that David 